Welcome, Greg. First question goes to Todd Crocker. Go ahead, Todd. Gregory, watching that third period, Manitoba certainly had good position time, but how or or did you see that translate into dangerous offensive opportunities? Uh, for them or for us? For, for you. For, for them, sorry. Yeah, in the third period, we let our guard down a little bit, let off the gas, especially on the defensive side of the puck. Uh, our intent to close and take away time and space in the D zone wasn't there. We got standing around a little bit, but... Uh, the team responded pretty quickly after they noticed that that was having an impact in the game and got back to doing what we needed to do. Uh, this is a, a fan question that I, I got yesterday, Greg, and sometimes it reminds me that we, you know, we talk a little bit uh, technically, but uh, uh, she asked, when you talk about turning defense into offense, how does that happen? And I, I said, well, I'd ask you. Uh, that's a really good question. It was actually a point of emphasis in our meeting this morning uh, with the group with uh, just how well they did that in Monday's game. Um, the transition from offense to defense, say the puck gets turned over and it's coming back towards our net, the willingness and want for our forwards to stop, get back above, come back towards our net as quickly as they can, track, get above the puck. As long as we can transition from offense to defense and have numbers defensively quicker than the other team can transit, transition from defense to offense, uh, that usually sets up our forwards in a better spot to then uh, in sequence transition from defense to offense in a better place of the ice with momentum to attack the net faster. Next question goes to Nick Barton. Go ahead. Hey, Greg. Timu Kivihome last season had four goals in 55, and this season he is four or nine. I was wondering how the year and a half you've there was a big focus talking with him one-on-one -on -one, uh, coming into the season, just how big of a year uh, it is for him. And uh, he's a really good person who really cares about the group and cares about his game. And he, he knew that the defensive side of the puck was an area that had to improve and, and, and be more difficult to play against, playing inside of contact defensively, getting in through hands, uh, getting more stalls. Uh, and he's, he's been really working at that. It's coming more consistently now. And because, again, just like the – the question before how defense creates offense because he's being uh, smarter with his positioning on the ice defensively. It's also putting him in smarter positions offensively to transition uh, and he's getting rewarded for it. Next question goes to Bob McGill. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, Greg, uh, obviously through your first eight games, uh, your penalty killing, uh, you know, wasn't up to where you would like it to be, uh, but, but 0 for 6 night or, or 6 for 6 night uh, on the penalty kill Monday uh, goes a long ways towards uh, getting it moving in the right direction as you continue to move forward as a group. Yeah, special teams are really important. And within any season, whether it's power play or penalty kill, uh, special teams waver a bit. Obviously, we, the more consistent uh, you can get within special teams and not have too high of highs, well, you want high of highs, but not too low lows, um, you know, really levels the playing field and has an impact in the hockey game and the season as a whole. Uh, Monday was a, a good start to getting back on track. Next question goes to Joshua Cloak. Go ahead, Joshua. Hey, Greg, can you provide an update on Ian Scott's kind of timeline and recovery so far? Uh, he's week to week right now. He, he's in a good place. He's uh, in his return to play. He was on the ice this morning. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he, that's his, he has a smile on his face. He's working hard to get back uh, but right now. Week to week. We know Nick Robertson has this kind of relentless work ethic. And, and you've said before that he has this drive to kind of, you know, intake information and, and improve. But I'm just curious, small sample size, but through nine games, what are some of the ways you've seen him improve specifically on the ice? Yeah, Monday was a great example of it. Uh, it was probably one of his best games when it comes to a lot of the things that he's been working on. Uh, he's tightening up his shifts and being one of the first ones to change, which allows him to stay fresh and play at his high tempo and his high pace every shift. Uh, he had a tendency of staying out too long, overextending his shifts, and the lactic acid builds up, and he doesn't recover fast enough, and it just becomes a, a snowball chain effect into his coming shifts uh, that doesn't allow him to play with the intensity and the speed uh, that he's used to playing. Um, uh, 
you know, he, he was doing a good job at setting up teammates behind him, coming onto the ice into the positive spots. Uh, his puck play is improving. He's moving the puck quicker. He's finding his teammates quicker. Uh, there's a lot of things that he's, he's improving upon, and, and Monday was a good example of that. And last question goes to David Sis. Go ahead, David. Hey, Greg, I just wanted to get your thoughts on Kai Edmonds. I know he hasn't played. He's played about 20 minutes uh, a couple of days ago coming in for in the relief effort, but just in practices and during the limited time you've seen him so far, what have you liked from his game, and do you expect him to maybe get a start anytime soon? Uh, I've really liked his his demeanor, his energy, him as a person. Uh, he really adds to the culture and the, the, the environment we have here. Uh, his work ethic and practice has been great. I uh, really like those 20 minutes he came in. He settled things down for us. He came in with a nice, calm, confident energy in that. Uh, you know, I have nothing but positive remarks to say about him and, and how he's conducted himself, and we're lucky to have him here.